covering the week's top tech stories with a slight Linux bias. Microsoft set, sent out an advisory on Friday detailing an under, an under attack zero day vulnerability for Internet Explorer. The scripting engine flaw can be exploited to gain remote code execution of a vulnerable machine by way of specifically crafted a specifically crafted web page. While this particular flaw can be mitigated by restricting access to the JavaScript component jscript.dll, there is no patch available to actually fix the vulnerability. Even if Microsoft is swift to create a patch, they plan to release it on an upcoming Patch Tuesday. Since we know that's the second Tuesday of each month, they're leaving this takeover exploit active in the wild for a good four weeks or so at least. These kinds of horrendous security practices are another reminder of why we shouldn't be trusting Microsoft to provide our antivirus too. There is no practical reason to be running Internet Explorer these days. If you must use Microsoft Windows, download Chrome, Firefox, or better yet, get the Brave private what excuse me, private browser from cat5.tv slash brave to automatically block ads while you surf the web. It's brutal. Yeah. Yeah. Microsoft has been continually letting us down. Windows 10 has been a nightmare. Mm -hmm. Has Microsoft ever not let us down? I mean, maybe back like Windows 93, 95? We can say that, but I mean, it, it, it felt like they... No, it did feel like they were giving it an effort back at, at one point. Yeah. I mean, they had the beta team. They had um, the, the testing team before patches went out. and But stuff like this and having to wait four weeks yes, for an crazy. actively exploited issue that's the thing. that is a takeover bug. Like, this is something that could completely compromise an entire network of machines. And so if somebody, a miscreant, knows of the vulnerability within, let's say, a, a business network mm -hmm. and actively exploits it, because it is, like, understand, folks, this is an exploit that is currently being used by hackers to infiltrate networks. Mm -hmm. right. It is currently being used. So if that's the case, wouldn't it be prudent for a company like Microsoft to say, we need to fix this and we need to fix this now? now. Yes. Instead, they're waiting a month. <laughs> At least. At least four weeks. I mean, we're talking the, the second Tuesday of February. Why four weeks, though? Like why? That's would, that's arbitrary. It's just the second Tuesday of every month why, is when they issue their patches. Yeah. Well, I, I get now? that, but yeah, why not push through an update? Because they don't. Because it's it, the rollout happens on on that schedule. They this is the thing they've set they've set themselves up yeah. for this type of failure. See, I think, their infrastructure is set up for this type of failure now. But I don't know why they couldn't even just post it to their website and say update manually. Like nobody's going to do it, but if no, you, really unless you know, unless it, it even if for a million years, but even if you know that that patch exists, imagine if you had a hundred computers mm -hmm. and you had to manually go like yeah. the whole windows infrastructure right now is a brutal nightmare. That's true. It's just ridiculous. And, it, and it's really causing companies, especially companies that are, currently stuck on window like that have windows 7 machines intermixed in their network a lot of government right. agencies yeah a lot of government agencies and we're looking at okay well what do we do next do we buy all new systems so we can install windows 10 because that's usually necessary unless you can maybe put more ram in them because you're going to need at least mm -hmm. like twice as much ram you're going to need uh, an ssd to you know make it you know, like you're going to need to upgrade you're not going to be using a five-year-old computer for windows 10 that's for sure no uh at least not without a couple of little upgrades so you know we look at that and then we say okay well what other options are there and these are things that we're going to be talking about here on the show but it really just makes you go Wow. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Let's back up a second and say, what's really, you know, what's, what's happening here? Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a wake up call too to say, maybe Microsoft has got way too much control over our corporation. 
Been saying that for yeah. decades. <laughs> a lot of people have. And I don't and I'm not even saying that out of my Linux bias that we call it here. I'm saying that out of the reality of this is actually happening right now. There is this active threat that is being exploited and Microsoft is not doing a darn thing about it until the next patch Tuesday. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And is Microsoft not vying for like some special government contract for something cloud related right now? You're talking like you know something, but you're not actually saying something. I've, I I feel like we've been <laughs> hearing about like there's um, the the U.S. government's looking to go cloud or something, and I, like With Amazon, Azure? like Amazon was in on it. And there's a bunch of different companies. I thought Microsoft was in on it as well. Well, there's only the three big ones. Well, yeah, but I mean, I'm thinking about stuff like this. It's like if you're doing a push every four weeks, if I'm vying for a government contract to create something new, you think you'd want to have a better business model? Well, like, yeah, I'm not yeah. even touching on that, like the business end of things. I'm talking like the but end user it. end of things. Right. This impacts all it of it. It should. It should make the governments grow, uh, like wise up and say, maybe there are more secure options out there. Yep. Maybe there are better options out there. And that, that, my dear friends, is where my Linux bias comes in. That's right. <laughs> <laughs>